Hi everybody, my name is Sandy Mill. I'm the admissions director at Sydney Sussex College, University of Cambridge. And in this short video, what I really want to do is give a quick guide to those who are going to be applying to university this year as to how to make some of the kind of big decisions which are going to be the start of that journey for you. And even if you're currently kind of stuck at home, lockdown situation going on, there's still a lot you can do to prepare for this and get yourself in the best position come October or January, whenever it is that you're applying. Now, it's worth noting that this advice that I'm going to give today is not really intended for any specific universities. It could apply to someone who's thinking of applying to Cambridge or Oxford or any other university in the country, actually. What this is, is a, a guide as to how to make those decisions about those really core things, the courses, the universities that you want to apply to and feel sort of safe and confident that you've made those decisions based on really good information. And I should say as well, there are a number of different ways that people might approach this. The one that I'm going to put forward today is really sort of the one that I kind of ascribe to, but that doesn't mean it's the only one. There are other ways of making these decisions and looking at these big choices that you've got coming up. The one big vital thing now, though, is that you should be starting as soon as possible. It may be only a matter of months away if you're applying to Oxford or Cambridge for medicine, dentistry or vet studies at any university in the country. You've got a deadline coming up on the 15th of October to get your applications in. If you're applying to any other university or course in the country, the deadline is in January. But you've still only got a few months to make these big decisions that are going to be really affecting the next few years of your life and maybe even beyond that. So any research that you can do now when we're in a relatively you know, quiet situation is actually going to be a really, really useful thing. So don't be afraid to get started on this right now. Whenever it is that you're watching this, it's a great time to start thinking about those courses, about those subjects, about those universities that you might be considering. That way, when you get close to those deadlines, you're actually going to have most of the pieces already in place for you. So how should we approach choosing courses and choosing universities? To my mind, the first thing that you should be doing, and this can be done right now, is check out the UCAS website. UCAS is the Universities and Colleges Admissions Service. It is basically the portal through which all applications to UK universities are going to take place. You can pick up to five universities to apply to, five different subjects or five the same subject if you want to. If you're applying for medicine, only four of those can be for medical courses. The fifth will have to be a different subject. But you've got up to five choices when you put in your forms. The reason that I say UCAS is the best place to look at is because it's got a whole host of information about the process, how it works all in one place for you. It's basically the one stop shop for finding out more about university admissions in the UK. So it's got details about how to apply and how that process all works, all the documentation that you'll get to have to get together, all the choices that you're going to have to make. You'll find all the information for that really clear on their website. It's got a course finder for every single course at every single university in the UK. And we'll come back to that in a second. Details about student finance. And if that's something that you're worried about right now, I highly recommend you go and check it out. When it comes down to it, a lot of the fear with, you know, wondering about, am I going to be able to afford university or not, comes from a fear of the unknown. It comes from the idea that you don't know what factors are at play, how much money might be available to you. And the best way to deal with fear of the unknown is, is to get knowledge, find out. Links to Student Finance England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are all up on that website. There are calculators that you can find out how much you might be able to get in terms of student loans, etc. So you can actually get an idea about how it will work. And if finance is a worry for you, at the base level, if you're a home UK student, the system of loans and grants that are in place in different regions across the country is designed to make sure that everybody has access to a university level education in the UK if that is something they want. It doesn't mean you won't be paying some of that back further down the line, but you have that right, you have that ability to make that choice. Another useful thing on the UK's website, open days. Now those are going to be all over the place in 2020. I say all over the place, actually they're probably going to be in one place and that is mostly online, but it will have all details for all events that are available, you know, Everything is a bit chaotic due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but there will still be events, opportunities to find out more about those universities and they will be collated on that UCAS website. It's also where once you put your application in, you'll find out what the decisions are from universities and where the whole system of clearing happens. You can find more information about those systems on that website. One thing I really recommend doing 
is actually getting your parents to go on there and have a detailed look as well. If your parents went to university, I can guarantee you the system will have changed possibly quite significantly since they went. So to put this into context, when I applied quite a few years ago now, it was actually a paper application form system. And you used to have to, to fill it in absolutely perfectly. If you made one mistake, you'd have to get a fresh one and start the whole thing again. Nowadays, the process is completely different. It's all done online, it's much easier. If your parents have been to university before, they may still be lingering under some old assumptions. So getting them to update their information is a really useful thing. And if your parents haven't been to university before, it's a great place to get them clued up on the process as to what you're gonna be going through over the next few months. It's gonna mean that you can have those conversations about making decisions about, you know, getting to certain open days and events if they're back on, about, you know, talking about the different subjects and courses that are on offer. You'll be able to have that with the same information base knowing that, you know, you're working from the same page, basically. So I really recommend whether or not your folks have been to university, get them on the UCAS website as well. An hour or two spent on that website over the next couple of days is a fantastic grounding for thinking about making your applications. Now, when it comes down to it, there are two big choices at play. Which courses do you want to apply for and which universities? And to my mind, the more important one of the two and the one that I would personally tackle first, again, this is not the only method, but subject choice to me comes first. It's the most important thing. And the reason for that is fairly simple. If you're going to be committing three plus years of your life to studying one or maybe two subjects, you want to make sure that it's something you're going to enjoy, that you're going to get the most out of. And you might as well double down on that for the fact that you're going to be paying in some form for your education for the very first time. You want to make sure you get what you're after, get the most bang for your buck. Make sure that you are getting the content that is going to be getting you where you want to go in life, or is going to be particularly interesting you. It's like, you know, if you, if you went and bought a really expensive item and you didn't find that it had half the features that it was looking for, you'd be disappointed. You'd be asking for a refund. Do your research beforehand. Find out, has it got all the things that I want from it? Is this course going to do what I want it to do? And that's going to mean that you're going to be applying to only the universities that are doing the right things. You're only going to be, you know, getting the product that has got the right spec for you and your particular needs. Now, as well as that, not all universities offer all subjects. So maybe you had your heart set on Oxford, but if they don't do the subject that you want, they're actually a useless university. And that's the same for any university. That's not just me throwing Oxford shade right now. But, you know, it means that actually that's gonna change your choices somewhat and mean that you should be looking elsewhere. So the first big decision really is, okay, what do I want to study? What am I interested in? What is gonna keep my attention and my motivation going for three years? And in another video, we're going to talk about how to prepare for university applications. And it involves doing a bit of extra study, a bit of extra reading. And that will help you work out whether you've made the right course choices as well. You'll be trying to study a little bit over the next few weeks and months like a university student would. And that will give you the indication about whether that's the right subject for you. If it's boring, if it's a slog, if it's a chore, it probably isn't. If it's really interesting, you just want to dive on in and just, you know, explore that subject even more and it really gets your interest going, you're probably on the right lines. Once you're fairly certain that you're looking in the right sort of subject areas, then you should really dive into the courses and find out, is that going to be the right course for you? Does it have the right content? So when you're thinking about the course content, does it give you the options that you want to specialise in? If you've got a particular interest, is it actually going to hit all of those? So an example I often use for this is, Let's say you know you want to study history. Now, history is a very broad subject. You know, there's lots of different parts, components, lots of different ways of looking at it. And maybe you've been doing GCSE for several years and you're kind of fed up with all the modern history and Nazi Germany and all of that that you know, often comes up as part of it. So you're thinking, actually, I'd rather go for something that's got a bit more medieval or European history in it. If you turned up on day one because you picked a course saying, oh, it's history and it's at a good university, and you found it was purely a modern history course, you'd be incredibly disappointed. So actually doing a bit of research into the course content is vital. What units or modules does it have? Now, this was actually incredibly important for me when I was a student. Now, I studied philosophy here at the University of Cambridge. I'm talking about subject choice a moment ago as well. I knew I wanted to study a pure philosophy course. So I started looking through the UCAS website, through the universities and the prospectuses, and I automatically found that that limited my choice of universities. Oxford wasn't an option for me. 
because Oxford doesn't have a pure philosophy course. It has PPE, philosophy, politics and economics. And I didn't want any of that pesky, you know, politics and economics getting in the way. So actually, that limited my pool of choices quite a bit. When it came down to it, I had a couple of key interests in philosophy. The first one was ethics, study of right and wrong. And it turns out a lot of universities have that as a course. It's pretty cool. But the second one was something called aesthetics, the philosophy of art and beauty. And at the end of the day, this was actually a much less common unit. There aren't many specialist teachers in that in the UK. And when I looked, it turned out there were only 10 universities in the whole country that offered an aesthetics module as part of their course. And that immediately meant that I could focus only on those universities that were going to have that content that I want. And it cut out quite a lot of those choices for me. Did the initial cut to give me a short list almost straight away. So whatever it is you're interested in studying, go online, go on the websites and download all of the reading lists, all of the course synopses. You'll find that universities are very public about these. You can just download them. They'll give you all the unit options that you can see that are typically on offer there. And of course, things may change a little bit as they go through if staff go off and do extra research or leave their job or whatever. But the units that it'll typically offer and you can see and check that you're going to get access to those subjects that you want to do. That's really, really important. It takes a bit of research, a bit of legwork, but it is well, well worth it. You can use that UCAS website to give you kind of the first links to get you where you need to go. Another thing that's worth checking at this point, any prerequisite subjects. Have you got the right subject choices at A-level in order to study this in your degree? And double check the qualifications as well as you're going through these universities and starting to have a look. You know, are you going to get the right qualifications at the end of it? And frequently, this will just be a Bachelor of Arts or Sciences degree. But if you're looking at a course like, for example, architecture, is it going to give you the professional qualifications that you need, the certifications, in order to go and do that professionally afterwards? You might be looking for some courses such as you know, engineering. Some courses have integrated master's degrees, so you can automatically go on to that next level up. That might be something that plays into your choices here. At the end of the day, you've got to make sure it's got that good quality content that you're after. Otherwise, that course is probably no good for you. Even if the university itself is a place that is appealing as a town or as a city or you know as an institution, content is key. Make sure you're going to be getting what you're after, what you're paying for when it comes down to it. So this should start to give you a bit of a short list. You start looking through these universities, seeing which ones have got those good courses. At that point, I would start making yourself a bit of a list. Start thinking about the things that you want out of a place as a university. We already know that every course that you're going to run through this is going to be a good course. It's got all the things in it that you want. So now we can focus on those extra things, the feel of the place that is really going to, you know, just be the difference maker in this case. So some things that you can think about, and these are just suggestions. You might have some, you know, not very strong opinions about these. You might have some very strong opinions about these. But what I would do is make yourself a list of desirable things about the place that you want to study. So for example, and these are just a few ideas, think about the location. If you want somewhere that is close to home, do you want to get as far away from home as blooming possible? Now equally, you know, people have got different reasons for, for saying either thing in this case, but that can be an important factor. You know, easy transport links, if you're going to have to make your own way there, could be quite a factor. You know, if you're getting stuff down on public transport rather than via a private vehicle. Do you want somewhere that is a city feel or a town feel or a country feel? Lots of different cities feel very, very different. Maybe you want somewhere that feels like your hometown area because it's more comfortable. Or you want somewhere that is very different to get an idea of a different way of life. No judgment any which way on this. Everyone is different. Everyone's got their own opinions. But write it down on your list. What sort of thing that you're after? Academic reputation, obviously important. You know, what sort of level are you looking at there? The facilities. You know, if you're studying a science subject, has it got really great facilities or there's certain things that you want? Maybe, you know, as an astrophysicist, you want somewhere with the biggest, nicest telescope possible. Maybe you want to make sure that, you know, if you're studying engineering, it's got a great robotics lab or, you know, if there's certain library facilities that you're particularly after. That can be really important. There might be social facilities as well. So if you're a keen swimmer, is there a swimming pool nearby that you can use? Are you particularly after somewhere that's got, you know, a, a top Quidditch team or, you know, that offers, you know, Mixed ultimate frisbee. I have no idea. I'm making this up as I go along. Um, maybe it's got, you know, certain official, you know, clubs and societies that might be part of it. Or the social facilities of the town. 
you know, if you're big on going out dancing at the weekends, has it got the right kind of nightlife, the right kind of clubs, the right kind of gigs that you want to see? Maybe you're a keen surfer. If so, an inland university probably ain't going to be great for you because getting from Birmingham to the coast is, is going to be several hours drive. Maybe you want somewhere that's coastal. These are just ideas, but what I would do is write yourself down a list. What are the things that you want out of that university? As long as you're honest with yourself, you can't go wrong. Then what you do, take that list of good courses that have all the things that you want in them, that great quality content, and run it through that list that you've just made and see which ones tick off all or almost all of those points. If they do, get them in the maybe part. If they don't, they're probably not one that you really want to be looking at too closely because even though the course is good, the place isn't quite what you're after. Maybe you can see what we're trying to do here is just eliminate the ones that aren't going to fit your particular preferences, your particular style to come up with a short list that is going to do that. You can be confident in that because you've thought about it, because you've checked it carefully, researched to see if it does all the things that you want to do. Now, this short list will probably get you, hopefully, to under 10 universities or so. And that's where we can start to think about finding more about universities. Ideally, we'd visit. This would be how you decide which universities to go to the open days of and find out a little bit more. And if things do open up a little bit further in the summer or in the autumn, that might still be a possibility. But if not, you can really get in depth into these universities online as well to go into detail and find out, are these really going to be the right places for me? Are they going to be part of my final five? Online open days are going to be very common going forwards. So go and check out when those are going to be. You can look on the university websites. You can sign up for those. They'll often have a number of different sessions available, chances to talk to current students. They'll have academic sessions, chances to talk to tutors, etc. All sorts of things that you can get involved with to find out a little bit more than what is just written on the website. You might also be able to find some extra subject specific sessions to find out what teaching and learning is like there. You know, there's all sorts of um, different events that people are putting on right now via Zoom, via you know Skype and Facebook and all sorts of things that you could be able to access even from your own home. And as well as that, virtual tours. You can have a good look around the university. These are becoming more and more common and you can get an idea, even if you're going to be unable to visit, as to what the area is like, begin to get a feel for it. And it will be a little bit harder in this year because of all the restrictions that are there. That's just an unfortunate fact with how the situation is going to be. But that doesn't mean it has to be all guesswork. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to find out more about these places and get a good idea about what they're like. If you put the effort in to finding out more about it, you're going to be able to get that information. And as well as that, Always be careful open days because you're seeing the university kind of at its best and as it wants to be presented to you. Don't be afraid to ask questions, even the slightly awkward ones, to find out you know, what it's really like about that. Many of you will have been involved with school open days before and you know that you're seeing the institution at its shiniest. They're putting you know, the best and nicest students forwards to, to, to give that good impression because they want you. And that's great. Don't be afraid to be a little bit cynical. Don't be afraid to ask the tough questions and scratch beneath the surface to get an idea of what that university is really like. And if you do that, if you know that your course is going to be really good because it meets all of your criteria, if the university meets all of those things that you want it to do, you can afford to trust your gut a bit because you've done the research. You know that it is going to be fitting most of your criteria, if not all of your criteria, so it's probably going to be a good quality place. At that point, the gut feeling that says, actually, this feels like home, this feels like a place that's got the right kind of vibe for me, is actually probably going to be quite telling. And you can trust that because you put the legwork and the research in before that. If you've got any questions about this or any part of the university's application process, specifically you know, for the University of Cambridge, my contact details are on the screen right now. I hope that this is a useful, quick guide to, to helping you start making those decisions. And I can't stress this enough, to start now. The longer you give yourself, the more time that you've got to really think about these things in detail, the more comfortable you're going to be with those decisions. They'll be less anxious. You're going to know that you're making good decisions based on the right information and the right research. And if you've got a bit of spare time right now because schoolwork may be limited or you know, you're stuck at home, a bit bored, this is one of the best uses you can make at that time to help you prepare for the future going forwards. There'll be more videos up on this channel 
um, explaining more about sort of the applications process and how to strengthen that very shortly, as well as hopefully talking about personal statements. We may even try and get a bit of a Q&A in here. So if you've got questions, don't be afraid to send them in. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been useful and hopefully catch you again soon. Bye.